So today we have another K dot reaction. This one is asked to call how Kendrick Lamar proved that Drake is not like us. Made by uh, I'm just saying, but he spelled saying like you know like Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan. So if you want to um, go ahead and hit that sub button, go ahead and do that. If you're watching this on Facebook, go ahead and hit that follow button. But uh, let's get straight into how k proved that Drake is not like us. When Jermaine Cole stood on stage at the biggest event of the year for Dreamville fans, he apologized to Kendrick Lamar. Many, including myself, were confused, seeing as he'd been on a roll taking shots at Kendrick alongside Drake. With braggadocious bars and records like First Person Shooter and Seven Minute Drill, it seemed like a three-way hip-hop war was imminent. Cole's decision to bow out gracefully left me so confused, even I dropped a video titled J. Cole Let Nas Down Again. And here we are a few weeks removed from rap's first major rap beef since Drake went Meek Mill, and Cole's decision is all starting to make sense. Hell, even reports came out claiming TDE Schoolboy Q told J. Cole ahead of time to not come to school the next day, and thank God he didn't because we just witnessed <laughs> a bloodbath on wax that was. <laughs> Don't come to school tomorrow. Hey, yo, it's gonna be some. It's gonna be some. Don't come to school tomorrow unless you want that smoke too. You you might wanna you might wanna you might not wanna show your face for a little while. <laughs> no, that's funny though. Absolutely great for the culture. I thought these three were just gonna have a fun, competitive, lyrical spar, but it turns out Kendrick and Drake really hate each other's guts. It all started with Kendrick's verse on Metro's album, We Don't Trust You. That's when he declared that there's no hip hop big three, it's just big me. And that's when Aubrey and his angels went into a total hissy fit on social media. So we ended up. <laughs> Aubrey and his angels is crazy. <laughs> Back-to-back -back records funny, with Drake titled Push-Ups and Taylor Made Freestyle. I thought Push-Ups was an okay record that served its purpose as a first-round jab. I didn't feel like it was that clever and it was a bit unfocused, but it definitely had its moments. Taylor Made Freestyle, on the other hand, eh. I wasn't a big fan. This is the record you can't even find online anymore, and that's because Drake chose to use an AI... Well, 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 well. I believe that you can find that on certain videos on YouTube. I'm just put that out there. I'm not promoting this song by no means. When I first heard it, I thought it was corny too. Um, take it how you will. But, but it I, for the record, I'm just saying it is out there. Mod to make himself sound like Snoop Dogg and Tupac. I understand the angle he tried to take by using Kendrick's West Coast heroes against him, but I don't think it stuck its landing for me. Specifically the Tupac portion. That man's Facts. been deceased for 30 years. I, I don't understand why people don't just let him rest in peace. Facts. And apparently Facts. I wasn't the only one who wasn't a fan either because the Tupac estate sent a cease and desist notice and the song was taken down. It was seen that Drake didn't ask for permission to use Tupac's voice, which further reinforces why the Heart Part 6 is such a terrible record, but I'll touch on that more later. Instead, I I want to focus on a part about Taylor made. Did y'all like the hard part six? Y'all feel like it was bad. A lot of people giving this song heat, like not good heat. They not saying it is fire. They they giving it like bad. They saying it is uh it's pretty terrible. Uh, let me know how y'all feel about that in the comment section. How that was forgotten. The internet moves really fast these days, so people tend to forget even quicker, so allow me to refresh your memory. One of the key takeaways in Taylor Made Freestyle was, Drake was taunting Kendrick. He kept begging Kendrick to drop, even insinuating he was scared. He also did this on push-ups as well. And I'm not gonna lie, at one drop, point, it drop, did look like Drake drop. was bullying Kendrick because K-Dot was so quiet. I just want to reinforce the whole taunting part of this battle because I think that part was forgotten, and it plays a major role in why I don't feel bad for what happened to Drake and his stands who are still defending him on social media. But in retrospective, Kendrick really wasn't getting bullied. It was simply the calm before the storm. When the smoke cleared on this battle, all I can think of was that scene from Pearl Harbor where Admiral Yamato says, I think one of the most unique things about this battle we've never seen before is the onslaught of records. Usually artists go back and forth in a battle, but Kendrick treated Drake like he was a fire who was gonna throw dirt on and just suffocate him. And it started with Euphoria, which upon first release, I liked it, but it also felt like a light jab similar to Push Up. To get started Shout in data analytics, you don't need previous experience or a degree. The Google Data Analytics Certificate. 
Oops. I would say at this point in the battle, I would give a slight edge to Kendrick, but Drake is far from out of the fight. That's how I felt when the song first dropped. Now that the battle's over, that song is aging like fine wine. Not only is it a banger, but Kendrick told Drake everything that was gonna happen, and he still let it happen. Then k <laughs> followed up with 616 in LA. Now that's funny, bro. The fact that that's actually facts, the, the further we progress, it's crazy. Like, everything that he said in his song is pretty much... Being fulfilled. Which is a play on Drake's timestamp series. This song was just okay to me at first, but I think this one has really grown on me. That Al Green sample is great. It's essentially a three minute record saying, I don't want to do this, but I was chosen to slay the dragon. So let me say a prayer, kiss my wife and kids goodbye, as I wage war against a man that represents everything that I hate about modern hip hop culture. This is another song that's aging like fine wine for me. And I've seen people complaining about this song not being available on Apple and Spotify. Oh, yeah, now yeah. I don't work for them. This is not an ad, but I will state this is just another reason to own YouTube Premium. Upgrading to YouTube Premium is one of the best things that I've ever did. Not only do you... He's saying this in an ad, but, you know, this is promotion. This is promotion. I'm not a hey, listen. It's just... Dude, that's promotion for sure. Weird songs like 616 in LA. I'm just saying, wink, wink, wink. <coughs> Anyways, this entire battle felt like the personification of pride before the fall. One side told the other, I am fully prepared to dissect you with the precision of a surgeon. And the other side was just trying to little bro the other and meme it up. And meme it up, he did. Drake was all over Instagram hinting at the fact that a nuke was coming. And in my opinion, that is a big reason why he lost. In my opinion, you might not even feel like he lost, but in my opinion, he lost. And part of the reason is because he keep he kept trolling, drop, drop, and then posting memes until Kendrick dropped. And after he dropped, immediately he dropped more memes. So instead of hopping in the booth, he hopped on Instagram. This is my opinion. And World was on standby. And when he finally hit that red button, oh boy, the damage was done. All of for a total of 30 minutes. But <laughs> I'll get back to that later. Instead, let's talk about Family Matters. Many consider this to be one of the best records to come out of this battle. And a week ago, I might have agreed. But the more I listen to it, the less I like it. I think the production is great and the visuals are too. But my biggest issues with this record is there are several questionable bars. Plus, it lacks focus once again. And Drake stands. Please stop making excuses for this 37 year old man drake is at the top of the food chain it's no reason to waste so many bars on people like future metro and the weekend when they can't even rap on your level so it looks like you're just ducking the kendrick smoke we're here for the main event and instead you're just that is a fact it seemed like he was using them as a as a way to avoid going at kendrick for the whole seven minutes that that song was it seemed that way i'm not saying that's what he was doing but that's what it still seems like to this day. So, and that's part of the reason why he lost. Kendra was going straight at him. He kept looking at them. At that point, when he dropped that, everybody, Kendra had already dropped Euphoria, and nobody cared about that other stuff. You, He could have made separate songs. I'm not telling him what he can and should, uh, cannot do, but or what he should have, shouldn't done, shouldn't have done. But me personally, I would have went at them separately. Because he got them out of the way with just one or two liners. And I'm not saying he beat them either. I'm just saying, like, he got them out of the way with one or two liners. Just like The weekend, they, they were saying one or two liners. So, you know. But he made a whole song. The whole middle part of Family Matter was going at them. And everybody was like, what are you doing, bro? We came here to see you go at Kendrick. So... Damn, I don't know who the boy had in his corner, but if I could have advised him, I would have told him, focus on Kendrick. Because not only is he taking shots at everyone, but then he's dropping bars like, Kendrick's always rapping like he's trying to free the slaves. I get where you're trying to go with that. He was trying to imply that Kendrick is not this savior that he presents himself to be, but it was a better way to word that. Also, another problem is, Kendrick never presented himself to be that. He literally says on his album, I am not, not your, your savior. savior. That is a fact. That's exactly what I thought when I heard that. I'm like, bro, did you even know who you your opponent is do you even listen to him are you just saying random stuff just to get a shock value type reaction that's what it seemed like
which makes me question Drake as a hip hop fan. Also, the line's just tacky. What's wrong with freeing all the slaves? If anything, it just reinforces the things Kendrick's been saying about Drake being a culture vulture. No sane African American would ever tell another, why are you acting like you trying to free all the slaves? <laughs> then he dropped another bar that some would consider to be homophobic. He said in one verse, weekends music's getting played in all the spots where boys got a little more pride. That's why all your friends dip into Atlanta paying just to find a tour guide. Now me personally, I wasn't offended by this bar, but that moment I heard that bar, I paused the song and I said to my stream over at twitch.tv slash the black Hokage. Yeah, nice, that's about nice the promo. Nice promo. To a lot more unnecessary enemies because it was just a stupid and unnecessary bar. It could be offensive to gay and straight people. Because if you're trying to say a straight male like me is gay for liking the weekend, I'm just gonna say that's stupid because I am a man. A man who's gay. You like niggas, get that to your head. Drake also insinuated some things about Kendrick's character, such as he assaults his wife, but from my research, that's been disproven time and time again. There's even been reports that came out stating he made that up, as well as the Dave Free Kid stuff, simply because he didn't have anything on Kendrick. I don't know what's true. So the way I've been judging this battle to keep things fair is based on the music. Until someone has some real paperwork, I'm simply looking at who had better production, clip And while the beef was going on, it was a lot of stuff being exposed by Drake. And a lot of stuff that Kendrick said has been proven true. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just saying. Bars, schemes, metaphors, and themes. I think Family Matters is a solid Drake record. I just think it could have hit a bit harder if it didn't sound like your typical Drake record and there weren't so many questionable bars. Also, let's be real. It didn't help that Meet the Graham dropped 30 minutes after Family yeah. Matters. That's this is why Shout out to the ads. I'm shopping on Amazon, <coughs> and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch this first. Watch this. I can show you how to get the sweetest deals online matters. Meet the Grams is an amazing song. I've never seen a diss record stomp out another one so quickly. That night was supposed to be Drake's night. I had only listened to Family Matters two times before Meet the Grams dropped, but suddenly okay. Drake's song didn't matter. Everyone was rushing to hear Meet the Grams because we wanted to hear what Kendrick had to say. I've seen Drake stand say that that song sucks because nobody wants to replay it on streaming services or it doesn't bang in the club, but you have to understand this is a rap battle. The goal I agree with that. This is a rap battle, but that's cow. People bumping meet the grounds. That's just a fact. <laughs> and a lot more people, man. It's getting a lot of uh, millions, millions, millions of streams daily. So record was to suck all of the air out of the room for Drake, and it did just that. I don't listen to Ether or No Vaseline regularly, but they're still great diss records. One thing this battle showed me is how casual a lot of rap fans are. I mean, we all knew it, but to actually see it is insane. I even saw Drake stand saying, but when are we gonna move past this? This is getting corny. Excuse you? If you're a fan of something, how can you get enough of it? This is the first time that we've seen Titans collide since Nas versus Jay-Z. I mean, Drake versus Meek Mill was just Drake punching down. Meek was never going to win in that battle. I mean, rap fans agree Pusha T did body Drake, but Drake stands refused to accept that. Instead, they opt to make the corny argument about how he has the most album sales, even though Drake admitted he lost. It's not really much. I... Yeah, he got body. He got body. It's just that simple, bro. And then he got bodied again. It's just that simple. You can disagree. It is what it is. You know? Uh, I don't know if I can play this interview in there, but... He it's the first saying. battle of the Giants that we've seen in a while, so let people enjoy it. For some, what this said. was their first major rap battle, and to be honest, I miss it. A part of me wishes either party dropped one more record, because since the battle ended, social media has returned back to your typical Gender Wars podcast and shitty video game takes all over my timeline. That night Meet the Grams dropped was absolutely insane. That track gave me goosebumps the first time I heard it. Shout out to The Alchemist, because the production sounded like something out of a horror movie. Some people didn't like the beat because it wasn't a club banger and to those people i say you totally missed the point the purpose of that beat was to set a somber mood the angle k-dot took by sitting down and sunning each of drake's family members was great i've been talking about drake being an emotionally stunted adult on this channel for some time so meet the grams really resonated with me this record felt like a dad was giving his son a well-deserved ass whooping and a stern talking there's no way you can convince me the reverb on kendrick's voice when he said you lied didn't make your skin crawl there were tons of wild accusations no, when i first heard that song it was crazy. I should have did a reaction to it because it was wild that night. Everybody was listening to Family Matters. Then the, the pianos come in. 
Doom, Doom, he like, man, what are we, what are we, what are we about to hear? <laughs> what are we about to listen to? And then the first word he says is Dear Donis. It's like, oh my goodness. I see what we're doing here. I see what we're doing here. And he, he went well, in. Such as Kendrick insinuating Drake is running some type of sex trafficking operation. And Drake's kids were surrounded by pedos. And oh boy, if you this... Know, that's crazy in itself. ...comes to light and it turns out to be true, that's horrible and we need to pack up Drake. But for now, there's not enough hard evidence on that. So instead, I'm strictly judging the song for the creative angle he took, the production, and the delivery. This did not sound like a typical Kendrick record. So to me, he scores points for the creativity and the versatility. Now, regards to not being enough evidence, I'm talking about the sex ring stuff with the Tinder app. By the way, that was wild in itself. They be streamlining victims in their home and call them Tinder. They leak videos of themselves to further push their agenda. And then Drake said in Family Matters, there's only Big D in his video proof. If y'all don't believe it was a leak, even if it wasn't a leak, Kendrick was playing chess and he was like 20 step moves ahead. Think what you want to think actions with young women on record and Baca, aka drake's right hand man he's looking crazy too drake's been shouting out Baca for years and yeah, just in case you needed case. a reminder i might declare it a holiday whoa, 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 whoa. we can't play that we can't play that homie I'm sorry, can't do that. Now crazy, now the world is more aware of the fact that Baca did time for pimping, a.k.a. sex trafficking. I mean, to be, let's be real. Yo, and I can't play a lot of this stuff that he's talking Their about. Their point, that was driven home and not like us. This was the nail in the coffin. One of the biggest talking points Drake stands make is that Kendrick is boring because he doesn't make club bangers. First off, that's not true. Damn is full of bangers, and there's a message in that album. But even if it were true, Kendrick heard y'all, and he dropped a joint for everyone to dance to. This song was genius for several reasons. First off, he made this song because Drake can't. What I mean is, one of Kendrick's main talking points is Drake doesn't have his own sound. He just hops on wave to wave, collecting people's styles like they're Infinity Stones and he's Thanos. Even in the early days, Drake was just a copy of Fonte with a pinch of Trey Song. I think what Drake had going for him in the early days was taking people's styles and collecting them like he's Thanos, like he's Stones. That's crazy. Y'all agree with that? He was vulnerable and he had relatable... Y'all think that that's what Drake's whole plan is? You can't say it's not to a certain extent because he definitely hop on waves heavily. He's been called out a bunch too for that. Oceans and world view allowed both men and women... Shout out to the ads. E online on Mac immerses you in a universe with thousands of women to enjoy his music because it was very down to earth. It was that moment he started acting like some type of mob boss is when he started to lose the people. Kendrick doesn't have to do all that. Not like us is him essentially saying, I'm from the West Coast, this is what we do, and oh, I can do a club record better than you. I just don't care to do club records all the time because, well, I have other things I want to talk about. I am genuinely shocked the most quotable meme bars came from the Kendrick songs. I expected nothing but triple entendres and metaphors. Like, this man gave us, what is it, the braids? And shoo! Show! And you can't forget A minor And that's just a few I could keep going Half a not like us Is basically just calling Drake a pedo Okay to... Fun on the record and once again showing versatility. My favorite scheme in this song was that Atlanta flip. This man took those homophobic bars from Family Matters about Atlanta and turned it into a whole history lesson, then used that history lesson to prove how Drake is colonizing Atlanta, which further plays into his insecurities of not belonging to the culture and being half white. I just don't understand how anyone can call themselves a rap fan, but then call this song trash. And before anyone calls me a Kendrick fanboy, just know you're listening to someone who used to call him Himself Drake Jr. and Darth Drake. I literally used to troll in Call of Duty lobby singing like Drake because I was. Nah, this is crazy. You ain't even have to explain yourself, bro. You ain't even have to explain yourself was how it all ended. It was so anticlimactic. Drake dropped the last record and it's called The Heart Part 6, which by the way, awful record. I don't even think he should have dropped this song. The gist of the song was, I'm not a pedo because I'm too- <laughs> He keeps speaking on that piece stuff, man. Hey, listen, I'm just trying to do a little simple reaction, you know what I'm saying? I feel, I feel, I know you gotta speak on it because it's, it's a heavy topic throughout the whole beat. But we gotta, we gotta come up with a term for it. A lot of people say P 
and then the D, and then the F. You know what I'm saying? I think they catch it on that too. But you know, uh, <laughs> when it gets to that right there, I gotta keep skimming through. Anything, that's the reason we should be sus about you. If I was a lawyer, I would tell Drake to shut the fuck up. Then he said he planted all this info that Kendrick rapped about and he's some type of mob boss pulling the strings and this was all <laughs> part of his plan. I'm sorry, but- Yeah, he lied. He lied. Your master plan was to have the world shouting you're a pedo over a mustard Oh pee. my goodness. So let me get- You're fuck this straight. It was your master plan to- oh, that no. people could forget about it? He also misunderstood the bars from Kendrick's album about his mother being sexually assaulted. Drake thought oh. those bars were about Kendrick, so he tried to use them against him by saying he touches himself to- yeah. It's crazy, especially oh, considering crazy. you're being called a pedo. But the no, no. to the Mr. Morale and Big Steppers once, and they couldn't <laughs> comprehend the concept of the song. Then at the end of the hard part six, he just yaps for the last minute and a half. He just makes some jokes about how Kendrick's gonna drop a thousand more songs because he's so obsessed. And to bring this video full circle, that's what makes this battle so anticlimactic. Friendly reminder, half of push-ups and tailor-made freestyle was spent taunting Kendrick to drop music. Even the hook was a double entendre on push-ups when he said, drop, drop 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 that wasn't just about the contract splits he was taunting k-dot to drop music and when he did drake didn't want to rap anymore he just waved the white flag the whole heart part six was weak but that last minute and a half was next level weak and a prime example of be careful what you wish for the best thing to come out of the heart part six was this i'm not gonna lie uh, uh, i can't i can't i can't do it g but i know what he's referencing Away from this battle now that it's over, and the first thing I want to say is I don't think Drake's career is over like some people are saying. He's a hit maker who hopped into the arena with an elite rapper, and he just wasn't ready. He will still have his fan base so long as his music remains decent, and that's because people who are hardcore Drake fans really don't care about this battle. The only thing stopping Drake is Drake. If he puts out trash music or evidence comes out about some of these accusations, then yeah, he might be cooked, and that's possible too. Might be cooked if evidence come out with a lot of stuff that Kada said. This man is going to J A well you know the rest you know how to spell <laughs> His music's been on the decline, in my opinion. Plus, there's someone on Twitter named Ebony Prince 2 k 24 and he's been acting. All right, I don't even want to talk about Ebony Prince, man. Is that what we're talking about? Kids, leave the quiet kid alone. You know they crazy, and Drake would have known he was crazy if he was really from the culture and not some upscale neighborhood in Toronto. It's almost like he's not like us, but hey. <laughs> That's funny, man. If y'all want me to react to more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, man, do y'all feel like Drake ain't like us? Or do you feel like, man, Kate Kendrick lost? Do you feel like Kendrick won? Do you feel like I'm just yapping right now? Uh, if you want any more videos, let me know in the comment. If you have any more reaction requests, let me know in the comment section. If you have any more requests, period, rather you want to see Whatever, whatever you want to see, let me know in the comments below.